So, theologically speaking, Hello, and welcome to Theologically Speaking. I'm Kyle Leon Henderson. And I'm Father Ian Elliott Davis. Well, here we are. It's New Dece- Year. December 31st. We, we made it. We the, did. To we the end of the year. <laughs> so, how are you feeling about it? A rotten year. Mm-hmm. Rotten pretty, year. Pretty I rough. thought 2019 was bad. But. A lot of people said that 2019 was bad, and I, I didn't really find it particularly bad, mm. but a lot of people did, but... I mean, we didn't, I mean, who knew? Who knew we'd get here in this way with yeah. a new administration in the White House looming coming next month? And About to be. England has, or I guess the UK has found a, a vaccine. Well, um, yes, and is out of Europe and mm-hmm. into Europe and completely mucked up and, oh, dear. So what they say when you've hit rock bottom, the only way is up. So the only here. way is up, Boris Johnson. Up. <laughs> Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Um, 2021, um, determined to be more positive and upbeat about everything. Um, I think one can only be optimistic. I, I think it's a recipe for disaster if, Mm-hmm. If we're pessimistic and looking at the 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 dark side continually and looking at the failures. And for me, New Year's is about new beginnings. It can't be about looking back at last year. And I've always said that New Year's Eve has been my favorite holiday. Or New Year's Eve, New Year's Day has always right. been my favorite holiday. Just because I know that, you know, if you're... If you have a bad habit or you're doing something, you know, it's there. You don't have to wait till the first of the year. You it's right. it's all one day after another. You should fix yourself whenever you feel compelled to. But this year is a perfect example of why I love New Year's, because we've mm. we've seen, you know, everything has become hashtag 2020. Anything that went wrong is hashtag 2020. Mm. So mm. 2020 is over and yeah. we can we can just sort of meditate and take stock and, you know, I hope that people out there in the world can take stock of some things that went right this year. Yes. I know that I know that it, given the fact that my father passed away and I lost my mm-hmm. job and I have had, you know, this, that and the other thing on top of the crazy year we've had. I have a full mm-hmm. list of positives that came from this year. And I guess you do, too, right? Yes. The Not only is the glass half fall for me but it's a miracle that there's a glass at all mm-hmm. so I'm well that's true i forgot about that that it was not 2019 dead. that you did survive cancer right so right that was a rough year here for to you. tell the tale and yeah here yeah. we are here we are at the end of 2020 beginning of 2021 mm-hmm. there's there's a symmetry to 2020 when you see it written down it doesn't quite ring for 2021 we are well we owe that to barbara walters 2020 the news program oh you're so welsh (laughs) i am i'm very welsh she's a newscaster it's like the bbc (laughs) oh bbc world news oh (laughs) oh i'm a very uninformed ignorant person oh so yeah, I mean, do you have any words of hope and cheer for the new year? Things will get better. The vaccines will start to have an impact on the population. Thank God. People will be able to move around again, I hope. I hope and pray. Mm-hmm. Families will be able to see each other more. And let's hope that we will cherish those times that we can be together again Mm -hmm. because I think you know we got to a place where we just took everything for granted before COVID I think so I think we we did we we I mean we were just talking earlier about how it's been since March since Mm. some churches have met in person and you know what you take for granted that you get to 
have those moments mm-hmm. of communion with people. You take for granted that you get to, you know, have holidays. My mother canceled our Christmas. Right. So, you know, for the safety of my grandmother and everything. Mm-hmm. So in the need for good news, um, we have Epiphany coming. Epiphany, the feast of the wise men, the three kings, we three kings of Orient are, or the Magi, um, from which we get the word magic, by the way, Magi, which is a, a Greek word, magoi, is the plural form, and it means sage, that's a wise man or wise person, I should say. And it's the feast of the three kings who come to visit the babe. And we don't know how old the babe is by now. Um, it could be some years later, uh, but he's still a babe. And they bring three gifts, and there are at least three wise men. We know that because there are three gifts, and magoi is a plural form. Um, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and traditionally... They're given the names of Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. And you'll see over many European doorways, and in fact in some American uh, doorways, you will see over the lintel the initials C or G for Gaspar or Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, CMB or GMB. Are those names in... The Hebrew Bible? No, no, then. How did you? How did we come to know those names? Those are just simply by tradition. Um, it's ancient church tradition gives mm. them those names. Um, I don't know exactly where they came from originally, but um, but those are the three names accorded accorded them by by ancient church tradition. Mm. I can just look up to see. We need glasses. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we are, Epiphany. No, it doesn't say anything about their names, Melchior, Gaspar, and Balthazar. Mm. So, Epiphany, what what's the tradition to celebrate that specifically in the calendar year of the church? To the, to celebrate the Epiphany, what? Why do they call it the Epiphany, too? It's the Greek word for manifestation, and that's what it's known as in the East. It's the manifestation of Christ, the Christ child of the Gentiles. Um, and it uh, was originally celebrated in honor of the baptism of Christ, sometimes also in connection with the Nativity. Mm. So... They go together um, in the West. In the East, they were separated out. And the big feast in the East of the Church, in the Eastern Orthodox part of the Church, is Epiphany. Um, Whereas we concentrate more on Christmas. Uh, Christmas itself, the birth itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, is, is that true that Christmas is more important than Epiphany or... Or vice um, versa. Well, there are there are two bits to it. There's the birth itself. Mm-hmm. So the word is made flesh. The word becomes flesh. The logos becomes a human babe. Um, that's one logos part. meaning word of God. Meaning word of God. Yes, uh, uh, logo to theo is word of God in Greek. Mm. Um, Christ is the logos. He is the word spoken by God and comes in uh, into being as a babe uh, in, in the womb of Mary, his virgin mother. One is the birth and the other is the manifestation, the showing forth of this child to the Gentiles for the first time. And so the, the message is proclaimed not just to the people of Israel, but is proclaimed to the whole of the created order, indeed the whole of of the then known world, as mm-hmm. it were. So around the lintels of the doors, you'd see in Europe and in some American homes, CMB or GMB, OPN, Orate Pro Nobis, pray for us. And people mark in chalk the date 
and you can decorate the the initials of the, mm. the wise men CMB with crowns and that kind of thing. And was it the wise men or the shepherds or both that were informed of the birth of Christ by the angel? Is the shepherds are informed by the birth of Christ. The wise men had followed the star. And they so the, the angel came to the shepherds and said yes. that Christ is born. Yes. And the wise men saw the star in the e in the west. In the west. In the west. For them. And they followed the star. They followed the star. They came from the east and followed the star until it came to rest over the, the place of the birth of the child Bethlehem, mm-hmm. which is the city of David. So that fulfills all kinds of Hebrew scriptures prophecy. Um, that the, in the, the lineage, Messiah, yes, that the Messiah would be born the, to David's line, mm-hmm. yeah, through mm-hmm. Joseph, though. Through well, it depends which gospel you read, because uh, there are two different lineages, there are two different genealogies, and uh, one is through the Virgin Mary, and one is through Saint Joseph. Do you, is is one correct, or are they both correct, or? <laughs> They're both correct. They're both correct. Yes. So Mary and Joseph are cousins. I just I'm putting two and two together. Yes. No, I don't. It happens don't. all the time on your home continent in Georgia or wherever <laughs> it is that you come from. Alabama. Sorry. Alabama. It does. It was it the does same, happen. isn't it? Georgia, it Alabama. Does. Mm-hmm. Tennessee. They're basically the same. But yeah. So. He is in the line of David. Right. He's in the family line he's of descended, David. descended, right. Through. So he's from Solomon and King Jesse mm-hmm. and all and the way through. So I guess I'm fixated on what I can't know for sure is they saw the birth of, or they saw the, the star mm-hmm. pointing to where Jesus was. Right. We don't know how long it took, how long it took them to get there, but did they, do you know how far they came well where just they were from the east that's all that we know mm-hmm. and the far east by tradition so that could be asia mm-hmm. uh, could be parts of africa um could be parts of the the middle east that we are familiar with that's east could of the mediterranean india could be india yeah so yeah that's the east um of course it, a lot of this is uh, geopolitical mm-hmm. is the word, I think, because Mediterranean literally means the middle of the earth, mm. the middle of the planet, Mediterranean. Mm. And so that the center of, of the world was the Mediterranean, and the center of the Mediterranean was uh, the Holy Land. The center of the Holy Land was Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Mm. And if you go to Bethlehem today, you can see in the Church of the Incarnation the spot where Christ is supposed to have been born. And there are beautiful, beautiful decorations and lamps and hangings about Mm. the place. It's a beautiful. And as far as our liturgy for Epiphany, Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's a Mass. And um, there are lots of traditions surrounding the Mass for Epiphany. Um, When I was in Britain, I um, was invited one year to uh, the chapel of St. James's Palace uh, for the royal uh, money that's presented, the gold coins that are presented. Um, It's a long ceremony, so the Mass takes place. And then at the end, one of the choir boys notices that the Queen's representative is wearing spurs on his shoes. And you're not allowed to wear spurs, actually, in church or chapel. So he is challenged, and he has to give a forfeit for wearing the spurs. So he presents gold to the choir boy, who presents it to the church. And Mm. that's the sovereign's gift of gold. I went one year, and it's quite a, a moving ceremony. And we don't do that in no, our we, church. No, we don't no, do that. That's just for that one specific place. Because I was Some like, I've never seen that, and I have been to no. every 
every epiphany mass since I've been in this church. Yes. <laughs> we, I mean, sometimes in some churches they'll have like a, like a Christmas pageant, mm-hmm. they'll have an epiphany pageant, or sometimes they'll combine them and have the wise men appear at the Christmas pageant And as I well. think that that's true for at least my experience in Protestant right. churches. They... The the combine just like in the nat- nativity scene, Everything. the shepherds and the wise men are there at the manger giving gifts, mm-hmm. and Mary is still holding her swaddled baby. Mm-hmm. Just for the sake, there are twelve days of Christmas, mm-hmm. and then there is the feast of Epiphany. Yes, of the Epiphany, and then after that, I mean, epiphany. is there is the Epiphany is only one day? The Epiphany itself is one day, but then it has its own season that follows after Epiphany Mm. Tide, as we call it. And that can last, well, it it varies from year to year. It can last six or seven weeks, um, but it depends on on exactly how uh, one ends the Epiphany season, whether it ends on Candlemas, which is the 2nd of February, or... It can continue on until we get to Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Oh, so it does sometimes go all the way to Lent. Well, there's a little chunk of what we call ordinary time that falls at the end of Epiphany and before the beginning of Lent. Mm -hmm. And that varies from year to year because the date of Easter Mm -hmm. varies from year to year. Therefore, Ash Wednesday varies from year to year and the beginning of Lent varies. So in our parish, for example, we keep the old fashioned Sundays of Epiphany, one, two, three, and then we go into ordinary time and we keep octogesima, quinquagesima, septuagesima, sexagesima. Those are eighty, seventy, sixty and fifty. Quinquagesima is fifty days before Easter. Mm. Now, it's not literally 50 days. It's not literally 60 days, sexagesima, or 70, septuagesima. But it's a rounded up kind of number. It's the idea that we're descending all the way Mm. to Easter. Mm -hmm. And then Lent 1 comes along, and that's um, a few weeks before uh, Holy Week, of course. Well, and the time leading up to Christmas Advent mm-hmm. it we talked about in the, a couple of episodes ago that it's an anticipatory season right. anticipating and waiting and then Christmas the 12 days of Christmas is uh, right. celebration yes and um, then epiphany is a and then what way. is what is our message to be thoughtful of during epiphany or is there a message to be thoughtful of yes i think so i think it's that christ is revealed as the light to lighten the gentiles as we sing in the uh, canticles at evening prayer uh, lord now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word for mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole of the created order, as I said earlier. Is that, that's not the Gentiles. That's that's not the start of the church as much as it is sort of a forthcoming of what is to come. Right. Is uh, that a a correct understanding? It's a symbolic beginning to the message spreading. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that we forget about all of the New Testament, that in between the sentences of the New Testament is a huge question. Um, How far do followers of Jesus have to become Jewish before they can be true Christians? Mm -hmm. Now, that was a question that exercised every single one of the first followers of Jesus who were not known as Christians. They weren't known as Christians if you read the Acts of the Apostle. Uh, they weren't known as Christians until some time later in Antioch, mm-hmm. it says. At first they were known as the followers of the way. Jesus was seen as the way. And we hear that in St. John's Gospel, mm-hmm. the fourth Gospel. And the, I guess the king, the, the Magi, mm-hmm. they were the first to recognize him as more than just a baby 
in Bethlehem. Right. They were the right. ones, because that's the whole point, is to become a follower of the way, right. eventually becoming Christian. Right. They were the first to know for sure that there was something more. Yes, and they'd traveled, so they were pilgrims, which is a, a marvelous way of looking at the Christian life, that it's a pilgrimage, mm -hmm. it's a journey, it's not um, that one's arrived suddenly and momentously and achieved everything, but that life is a continual journey and an unfolding of the Christian message of the gospel. Uh, that's what theology is about, the unfolding of the will of God and getting to understand the mysteries of the divine and the mysteries of humanity, the mysteries of the universe itself. Who were the the wise men, the magi, the the you know the kings? Well, we don't know a great deal about them, other than that they were these wise men from the east, these magoi or magi. Um, what we do know is that ever since then, the their earthly remains, their relics, uh, have caused untold chaos and, and wars and battles and things. People have fought over the possession of the, the, the wise men, and they're now at Cologne Cathedral in Germany. So we do have the... We have the, the remains, The relics yeah. of the, the actual... The bones of the, bones the wise of men, yes. Because we do. We, I mean, relics is a big part of... Of, of church, our tradition. Of our tradition. We ourselves right. at St. Thomas have a relic of St. Thomas. We have a number of relics. The apostle. Yes. Um, yeah. We have a number of relics. Yes, we do. I we, didn't know. I only knew we had St. Thomas. We have a number of relics of St. Thomas, and they're first-class relics, which means they are, as far as we're aware, actually part of the saint himself. Mm -hmm. Because um, you preached one of the most beautiful sermons about our personal relic, which is not has anything to do with Epiphany, but I, it's worth mentioning since we're since we're talking about it. Um, you're I don't know if you know if you remember this, but you said there's no way to know for sure because a relic what a relic is is a tiny mm. fragment of the right. bones of no. Of, of the saint. The saint. Yeah. And we have a, t a fragment of St. Thomas's bone. And you said being St. Thomas is, is the doubting saint. He doubted mm -hmm. the risen Christ after Easter. Right. You said there's no way to know for sure, but you like to imagine that the fragment of bone that we possess here at this mm. church would be of the finger that Thomas right. stuck inside in his side thrust into the side of Christ to and it just I don't yeah. know it just stuck with me that yes that that portion was that and so sorry go ahead well i think one of one of the crucial things there is the that there's actually there's a locatedness to our theology mm -hmm. our theology isn't just some kind of pie in the sky when you die, kind of um, just a purely mental exercise. Theology mm -hmm. is actually about place, and it's about locatedness and location and where we are and who we are and what we are. And we're real flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. And St. Thomas was real flesh and blood, and so was Christ real flesh and blood, and there was more to Christ that met the eye, of course, mm -hmm. and that's partly what St. Thomas is all about because he doubted at first that this could be uh, Jesus risen from the dead mm -hmm. and then eventually... Which is, it's a beautiful metaphor that, you know, it just reminds me that it's okay to have your doubts mm -hmm. and it's okay and that's what our theology always, that's what drew me to our theology in the first place, yes. that it's here. Yes. It's here for you, whether you're fully present with it, whether you are mm -hmm. having your doubts like Thomas did. Right, right. As long as you keep your faith. Yes. Or you at least seek your faith. Yes. It'll be here for faith you. Faith seeking understanding is mm -hmm. what it, it's all about. And getting back to the relics, now that we've gotten mm -hmm. a little bit more mm -hmm. of the, the explanation of the relics, 
the relics of the wise men. Right. Do we know that they were, because the sort of, the, the way was, and I used air quotes, I forget we're on a podcast. Right. Um, the way was the Jewish faith at that right. point. Yes. Do we know if the wise men... The, Can, the Magi, were they Jewish or do we... No, they we were not Jewish. They, they were, definitely weren't Jewish. They definitely were not So they weren't Jewish, Jewish and then they probably, I mean, do we know if they were Christian at some point in their lives? Well, if they're followers of Christ, then yes, I'd say they So they Christian. sort of became, so they were like old school Christians before it was cool to be a Christian kind of right, situation. Right, yes. We were Christians so far back that they didn't even have a name for us yet. Right. <laughs> so far back that we weren't even known as Christians. That's right. It was in such early days. Well, and the... I don't know if I even said this yet. Do we know what they were before they came to Christ? There is a tradition that they may have been Zoroastrians. What is that? Ah, confer the book. <laughs> um, Zoro- Zoroastrians are a, a religious group. <laughs> There's bells everywhere. Um, in the the Middle East. And is it, Does it have anything to do with Muslim or Hindu at yes. all? It does. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's to do with Muslim. And Abraham. I think so. I need to look this up before I land myself in any more Zoroastrian. Zoroastrian. Oh, here we are. Also known as Maddaism. Mazdaism. The system of religious doctrine ascribed to Zoroaster. Zarathustra. Which in later times became the dominant religion of Iran. Hmm. And under the Sasanian dynasty the official state religion. Its priests were called Magi from the old Persian Magu. After the conversion of Iran to Islam, Zoroastrians sought religious freedom in India, Hmm. where they were called Parsis. Yes, I've heard of the Parsis. It sounds familiar, too. Um... Yeah. But that, that's fascinating. That There's a long entry here. So Ahura Mazda is one of their, their angelic beings. The, yes, it's, very, it's ever so long and complicated. We, maybe we could do an episode on... I, w- I think that would be fantastic. I'm just curious. And, this, and I do... I, I've always said, and I tell my therapist this, and she says you've got to stop needing this in your life. I like to tie everything up in a nice, neat little bow. Everything mm-hmm. makes sense. Everything is just symmetrical and everything is right. And there is a lot of that in the church calendar. Yes. Epiphany, and we started this top the top of this episode with a new year, a fresh start. Is there any kind of ties between fresh start and epiphany and the new year? And is there any kind of sim- symbolism in all of that? Or is it just a coincidence? No, I think for us there is symbolism in it. Um, the, our new year began at Advent, mm-hmm. so we're looking backwards. If if we're looking for a New Year's Day for the church, for the church's ecclesiastical calendar, but New Year's Day is also the feast of the naming of Jesus or the circumcision of Jesus, mm. January the 1st. So, yes, there's a sense in which there's a new beginning, there's new hope, there's a new breath of fresh air, if you like. And I think that's important to come in the midst of a winter, winter season uh, mm. when in in certain parts of the world the sun is only... Uh, above the, the horizon for a relatively short period of time, depending as is on the sun only here for a short period of time. The sun is only here for a short period of time in his physical, physical. manifestation, which is epiphany manifestation. There we go. There we go. Would you like a poem? As always, we've <laughs> never we. I come eager at the feet to hear your poems at this point this is T.S. Eliot's The Journey of the Magi 
a cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey. And such a long journey, the ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces and the silken girls bringing sherbet, then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women and the night fires going out and the lack of shelters and the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly and the villages dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, wet, below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a watermill beating the darkness and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, six hands at an open door dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information. So we continued and arrived at evening, not a moment too soon finding the place. It was, you may say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again. But set down this, set down this, were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly, we had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. We returned to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death. Theologically Speaking is a production of Church Nerds Productions. Executive producers for the show are Jeffrey Clark Tosca, Father Ian Elliott Davis, and Kyle Leon Henderson. Associate producer is Ed Tosca. Editors for the show are Kyle Leon Henderson and Jeffrey Clark Tosca. Music for this program is provided by Dr. Jeffrey Parola and the choir at St. Thomas the Apostle Hollywood. We'd also like to give a special thanks to Louie for all the loving licks on the knee under the table while we produce this show. Visit St. Thomas the Apostle Hollywood Facebook page for more information on the show. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at St. Thomas Hollywood.